protesting isn't enough and voting don't change nothing. If it did, they'd ban it. We need to protect and create new systems. When I spoke to the great Satish Kumar, the legendary author, activist, protester, who met Martin Luther King, met Bertrand Russell, walked around the world without a penny in his pocket to help the peace movement, a pilgrimage of learning. I spoke to him on my podcast, Under the Skin, available on Luminary. You can get it on Apple. And we talked in depth about how the protest movement needs to change, the problems around the social justice movement and its impediments, how we can create a different world if we engage ourselves as individuals and create new collectives. Have a look at this video. You are going to love it. If you're someone who wants to change the world, who sees the problems in this world and wants to do things differently, you should watch this video. With some of these examples of great people that you have cited over the course of our conversation, some of whom I know you have uh, met and communicate with intimately, have you noticed that in some of the most prominent, vocal, public, visible aspects of, I would say, the leftist activist movement, there is a tendency towards iconoclasm uh, and the destruction of some of these heroic figures, or if not destruction, the dismantling, the deconstruction, including Mahatma Gandhi, certainly John Lennon, certainly Picasso, even Mother Teresa, where there's a sort of a focus on the, ah, oh, but they did this, ah, oh, but Mahatma Gandhi did that, ah, oh, John Lennon did this, a kind of tendency to de deconstruct and I would say sort of annihilate the positive aspects of some of these great icons of counterculture and of activism in order to achieve a sort of what I, it seems to me to be a kind of an unattainable new puritanism. No, I think that's a, a mistaken, mistaken um, a view of the so-called radical left uh, because uh, people you have cited and I have cited, I have met like Martin Luther King, I met and he was a great activist and he was not a wishy-washy flaky um, uh, person. So what, he, what is good in these sort of examples, Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King and people of that nature, they don't, they have not just protested and spoken against something. They protest, of course, Mahatma Gandhi protested against colonialism and imperialism. Martin Luther King protested against uh, uh, racialism, but protesting is only one way, but not the complete way. After protesting, at the same time while we are protesting, during that time, we also need to protect. Protect what is good in society. So we have to protect biodiversity. We have to protect um, traditional uh, in indigenous wisdom and indigenous cultures. We have to protect um, our rainforest. We have to protect the beauty. We have to protect uh, um, uh, spirituality. So protecting was the great work of people like Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King and all the people of that nature who ha are, have fought against an injustice, social injustice, environmental injustice. But also at the same time, they have also protected the just order and the, the local economies and local communities and many good things. So protecting beauty and goodness and truth is as important as protesting against the unjust order. And the third thing they did, which lots of these left-wing intellectuals forget, that they built alternatives. They did, just didn't say no, no, no to wrong things like racialism and imperialism and colonialism and industrialism. They also said yes to positive things, new things. They built new communities, new schools, new um, uh, colleges. I started Schumacher College, so create a new alternative education and uh, a, a new way of industry, new way of uh, kind of uh, um, Mahatma Gandhi started a spinning wheel and new architecture. So building new alternative to show that what is something which can be without pollution, without waste, without drudgery, without exploitation, without um, uh, inequality, you can create a better society. So setting those examples, if you put these three things together, protest, protect, and build, then it's a complete and holistic movement. But just the political analysis of the left intellectuals or a kind of just a, um, kind of dismissing all the great things that uh, our ancestor activists have done, I don't agree with that. 
Yes, because it seems to me that two of the most important constituencies for any successful movement would be the kind of emergent social justice movement who I get a sense would focus on the fact that Martin Luther King had extramarital affairs and ordinary working class people who feel a very long way away from the objectives of this new social justice movement. I feel like unless there is a coalescence between the kind of people that are drawn to nationalism and populism and the kind of people that are drawn to social justice, identitarian politics, unless there is an alliance built around, as you say, the kind of focus on positivity and alternatives and an acceptance of human fallibility and frailty, uh, an acceptance that even great people of the past were humans. And as you have said earlier in our conversation, Satish, a composite of positivity and negativity as the laws of physics would surely demand. Unless the, these ideas can somehow be embraced, mobilised and uh, co congruent in spite of their superficial uh, opposition, there's very little chance of mobilisation. And I, I want, it's actually the question that is most on my mind, is how to achieve this kind of unity rather than focusing on this opposition. Now, uh, social justice movement, I totally agree with you, is very important. Uh, and social justice movement uh, has to be rooted in environmental justice movement. So that is two sides of the same coin, because you cannot have an unjust um, relationship with the environment and an and, uh, unhealthy planet and a sick planet. You cannot have a healthy society and a just society. So environmental justice and social justice are two sides of the same coin. But at the same time, if we do not have spiritual uh, foundation and, and a spiritual rootedness, then social justice movement will remain skin deep and superficial and, and just organizational and just institutional and just the kind of uh, systemic, uh, but not deep enough, it's a superficial system. And so I would say, uh, yes, uh, social justice, I totally agree with you. We need a social justice movement and there are lots of social justice movements there and we need to support them, but that should be balanced with environmental justice. And those two justice movements, environmental and social justice movement should be complemented with spiritual um, uh, awakening and spiritual practice and living um, example of that has to be there. So I would say without spiritual environment, spiritual dimension and spiritual values of compassion, of kindness, of simplicity, of generosity, of love, of, uh, of uh, respect, of reverence for life and respect, reverence for each other. At the moment, even social justice movement, particularly the socialist and, and a kind of left wing movement, they have only focused on um, uh, human justice but their aim of industrialism, production, economic growth, um, consumption, that is not, they have not challenged that. They, mm -hmm. are, they are as industrialists, as capitalists. They are as supportive of consumerism and materialism and, and production and consumption as capitalists. So we need to change that. And we have to say production and consumption should be within the limit of the planet Earth and production and consumption and economic growth should be in the service of humanity and not uh, its own goal. So the end and means have become confused. Our end should be human well-being and planetary well-being. And the means should be money and economy and, and, and a kind of industry and, and production. But at the moment, the end goal has become the production, consumption, economic growth, materialism, and means are nature and humans. So we are treating humans as if they were tools, they were instruments of making profit. If you are not making profit for a company, you are sacked. You are <laughs> and so turning human beings and turning nature into tools and instruments of profit and economic growth is the basic uh, problem, which I think left wing uh, and liberal uh, um, people and, uh, and, and so on have not quite understood. Uh, so social justice movement has to be rooted in environmental justice and spiritual values. Then social justice movement will be strong and, and holistic. That's beautiful. I've never thought of it in those terms that in a sense that the movement is in a, a way just a progression of the individualism that preceded it with a fixation 
on the rights of the individual, the role of the individual. Whereas environmentalism, it, it imposes upon you a holistic and spiritual ideal that helps you to uh, perform or achieve the necessary transcendence of your individual infatuation, your partialness to yourself, which is the root of the problem in so many ways, which it makes us, it makes it possible for us to be um, uh, used by the machine in this way because we are all wed to our individual identity. We are all aligned to these principles. When enough people regard the environment and the whole as more significant than their own individual goals, then we become less in tune with the frequencies of the dominant culture. I see we cannot have social justice without environmental justice. We can't have justice for any individuals until we behave justly to the planet upon which we live, our host system, our parent system, our family system, our mother. I totally agree with you. And what you have just said is completely music to my ears. Yeah, you just explained it to me. <laughs> <laughs> because I agree with you that this individualism is rooted in separation. And we say, I'm separate from you. I'm separate from nature. And then we separate that individuals into nationalism. And we say, America is separate from Europe. And England is separate from Europe. And, and uh, Af Africa is separate from Asia. And, and India is separate from China. And then blacks are separate from whites. And men are separate from women. So separation and division. So we need to overcome this division. And we need to say division is not division. Division is not divisive. Division is difference. And, and we will have difference. Uh, long live difference and long live uh, diversity. So let us transform this division into diversity. And diversity should be celebrated. It's wonderful to have many religions. If, if the whole world, seven billion people, were only following one religion, it would be boring. If seven billion people speak only one language, that'd be boring. It's a good to have many languages, many religions, many nationalities, many races, many colors, many cultures. Like in a music, you have thousands of notes, and those thousands of notes make music. So diversity should be celebrated. Evolution favors diversity. In the beginning of the Big Bang and beginning of the uh, time and beginning of the universe, uh, there was nothing. And then evolution had billions of years of hard work to create this diversity, millions and billions and trillions of forms of life. We should celebrate rather than um, turn this diversity into divisions and individualism and conflicts and wars and, and uh, superior and inferior and hierarchy. So, so this separation and disconnection and individualism and nationalism uh, has to be transformed into one earth one humanity, one future, but we are all different within that unity. So unity and diversity dancing together, that should be uh, the purpose. So we have to go beyond individualism and within oneself, you have to see, I am a microcosm of macrocosm. I am a whole universe within myself. I am made of my ancestors. I'm made of the whole evolutionary process of billions of years. I'm a child of the whole universe. I'm a child of the stars. I'm a child of the moon. I'm a child of the sun. I'm a child of the earth. So that kind of sense of unity of life when we have, then I think we can rise above this individualistic separation and disconnection and isolation and, and lose the sense of belonging. We belong to each other. We have to develop and cultivate a sense of belonging to each other. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, maybe you'll consider going over to Luminary. You can get it off Apple and subscribing to my podcast under the skin. I also do a meditation podcast there above the noise. Most importantly of all, sign up to my mailing list at russellbrand.com. Then I can communicate with you directly, not into your brain like I'm implying with my body language, just by email. Nothing weird goes on. Maybe you'll consider watching this one more about the corruption in the world and the horrors that we face. But, you know, educate yourself, arm yourself. And this video on my Awakening Side channel here on YouTube will help you to educate yourself or open yourself up to receive further wisdom. Thanks for watching. Cheers.